What's going on? Chris Young, and today we're going to talk a little bit about your Keystone Bullet Ultralight. Yeah. So now it's time to meet your new Keystone Bullet Ultralight RV. Congrats, it's a great RV. We're gonna start right up front with the powered tongue jack, which really helps with setup as well as hitching up. You got the LCI Lippert tongue jack, pretty self-explanatory. The, uh, the LED light is there for a little additional safety and security for at night. And then you got the extend and retract for the jack leg to kind of keep everything, you know, well, easier to set up. If you do need to manually move the jack because you don't have power or something's faulty, this little rubber stopper right here underneath is a is a nut that this will go on. You just crank it and that'll get you rocking and rolling. Now, you do have two 20 pound LP tanks with a plastic cover on your Bullet Ultralight. And you'll see right here, we do have the selector switch. If you open up the tanks, if you have gas, this indicator should go from red to green. This, when it's pointing this way, I'm using this tank. When it's in the middle, I'm pulling equally from both. And when I'm pointing this way, I'm using this tank. So always check to see which side you're on, as well as uh, if you have propane. Got your battery box back there, as well as your battery disconnect, which is good to have. Uh, also make sure that the disconnect is on when you're charging your battery too. And then look, you see these right here? These little plastic clips. When you're putting your cover back on your LP, make sure those are pointing towards the coach. And there we go. Got your little 10 amp quick connect for your solar panels right there. And we have underneath, we have our PSX-1 stabilizer jacks, which are electric, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, as you can see, you have the controls for them right here in the external command center, which I'm gonna get to here in a minute, but let's see. So when you push these down, you'll notice that they might not come down at the same time. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. But once again, they are stabilizer jacks, not leveling jacks. So when it stops and you hear it grind like that, that's when you know to stop because you don't want to overdo it or break them. And if you do need to manually override or manually use them, you just use this little attachment right here. It slips over the ring and there you go. You can crank them up as well as crank them down. Just try to get yourself some leveling pads or some blocks to use to make sure that you stay level. You're gonna have magnetic anti-slam latches on all your storage compartment doors around as well as covered uh, hinges, I like that. A porthole right here for your connections. And you'll see external sprayer slash shower port right here. You got your fresh water connection, your black tank flush, and your city water connection right here. That right there is the pressure valve. If you're gonna be filling up the fresh tank with well water, just be careful. It will possibly have some sediment at the bottom, some sulfur. Uh, just clean your, your, your fresh tank out with uh, white vinegar uh, you know, every now and then so you don't have that hooking, you know, just, just messing everything up. Hot water bypass is right here. You do have a six gallon hot water heater bypass. Winterization control is right there. Your winterization plug is right there. Your key TV multi-source connection, which is a smart controller. So if you plug it into cable, all the outlets are gonna know that it's cable. Plug in satellite, all the outlets inside are gonna know that it's satellite. And right here is your satellite roof prep plug right there. Now, we have true fit slides on everything Keystone, but the one thing that I will suggest, if you can get it, I would highly suggest getting it. Get yourself some slide seal treatment so that these right here, the seals don't dry, they don't crack, they don't break on you and cause, cause some issues with your true fit slides. Insulated all the way around, sealed safety glass all the way around. We'll get to the tires on the other side, Bobby, so it's easier to see. 50 amp connection right here. Just always make sure that you are plugged in. You'll notice that the green light will be on if you're getting power. Uh, if not, just always check the power post to see. And as you can see right here, we actually have a dog bone because this is a 30 amp dog bone, but a 50 amp cord. So not, I mean, the, the optimum setup, but it can be used. Just always try to do 50 to 50 and 30 to 30. More storage here, which as you can see is finished off. And underneath, where we have that enclosed and heated underbelly, we have our main terminations. Now, the black tank and the gray tank, you don't have to keep them open when you're hooked up all the time. As a matter of fact, it's good to let some water get in there, especially for the black tank, because that solid waste could cause some pyramiding, which can make it, you know, 
the sensors act up, could also be a lot harder to clean. Um, so just dump the black first, then dump the gray when you are dumping them. Get your clear elbow so you see to make sure that everything is, is cleaned out. And if you are gonna clean out the black tank, make sure you're hooked up to a dump and that black tank valve is open. Do not spray that black tank with it closed. 4x4 sewer hose storage here. We do have some rubber caps that you can put on that. Spare tire mounted on the back. Backup camera is there as well. Highly suggest using that. You do have the Solera arm with the adjustable pitch right here. Powered awning with the LED light strip. To adjust the pitch, you just pull it down. Just when you get done, put it back up so that when you roll the awning in, it's flush. It's not cockeyed, which could cause some issues. Sprayer ports on the outside, so if you need them. Good little spot right here for the campsite. If your Keystone Bullet Ultralight does come with a camp kitchen, you're gonna have the Suburban two burner cooktop. And to light it, you just push down and turn to light, but you're gonna need one of those little grill lighters and make sure when you're done that you cut this off. Double check to make sure that they're cut off. You do not want propane leaking. Sure, we get, you know, Mercaptain inside uh, there, so we know that it's leaking because of the smell, but bugs and critters also like it hot point fridge on the outside little small ones with the little ice tray spot right there great for outside camping make sure too when you close these that you close and lock both because if you notice my side over here is closed but look look at how much space is there moisture rain can get in there and that's not going to be a good day aluminum rims on these with those Dexter Easy Lube axles and extra wide berth. Uh, good for going down the road with these double axles because it's easier on the suspension or, or just easier on the pull. And with these Dexter Easy Lube axles, about every 1,000 miles, give them a squirt, one, no more than two, but make sure you get the right grease from your tech. Don't just happenstance get something, get what's right because you don't want any blowouts, neither do we. External connection, key TV multi-source connections right there. There we go. Now for your furnace, you'll see the back plate right here. This is the Dometic 30,000 BTU furnace, which comes standard in all of the Keystone Bullet ultralights. This is the vent, so just watch out for that. Try not to put any chairs here if you're running the heater because that's hot air, it could cause some issues. And you're either gonna have the Dometic or the Suburban water heater. This one just happens to be the Dometic. As you can see, the, the, the control panel is exposed. I'm not a fan of that because when these break, that means they have to be replaced. Get your pressure release valve right there. The tube, the igniter, the whole nine. Uh, if you notice, oh, and also your uh, little thread cap right there. Um, if you keep some pipe cleaners, that'll really help, especially after storage. Get in there and get all the cobwebs and stuff out because that Mercaptain, like I mentioned, bugs love it. They will get in there, spiders will cause nests, and all of a sudden you're getting flashback. Um, if you, you don't want to burn out the element, you don't want any issues, keep that clean and watch for it. Also, if you notice uh, any like streaks or dirt or debris on top of the hot water heater, that means there's probably some debris in there being blown up up top or you're getting flashback. Just clean out that tube. Solid step over steps leading us into the master entry point here. And you'll notice to get these up, you want to make sure to have the door all the way open. Oh, which we can't because of the awning. But we got the release handle right here, which is our lock mechanism to bring the stairs in and out of the master entry point. And to adjust the legs, you got the little pull tabs right here. Just pull it up, find out what length you need for your leg so that your stairs are not only level and flush on the ground, but this top plate here is flush enough that you can close the door. Now, let's go inside because it's a little hot out here. And it does feel good inside this Keystone Bullet Ultralight with the arched ceiling, giving me over 80 inches of height in there and my blade distribution system for my air conditioning. I like this. Uh, it's what it is. It's just an innovation that Keystone came up with to distribute the air a little bit more evenly, a little bit more effectively. So you get about 30% better return on that. Now, when you come into your bullet ultralight, probably the first thing you wanna look for is gonna be this, this control panel over here, where we're gonna, we can cut on all of our lights, we can run out the slides, we can run out the awning. Plus, if you're gonna be boondocking and using water from the, from the fresh tank, you can cut on the water pump there. When you cut it on, it'll prime and it'll prime until it's ready, then it'll cut off, and then as soon as you hit the faucet, that's when it'll run again. 
Now with your water heater, you do have the gas electric right there. When you cut those on, they, they should fire up. Uh, and you know, just with that uh, panel on the outside, there is a fail safe on it. Well, depending on which one you have, you could either have the Dometic or the Suburban. Um, there, there is a fail safe that will pop, but I'm telling you now, if that happens, bring it in. It's, it's time for it to be checked out. You don't want to mess with it. Uh, just bring it in so our folks can, can, can check it out. But that right there is where you control that. Up here is where you check your battery. Now, if you're plugged into shore power, we should be full. Depending on the charge of your batteries, you should be able to run the slides out as long as you have more than two thirds charge. I always like to say 11.8 is a good marker for running the slides out. Uh, you can also check your black and your gray tanks, your fresh tank. Uh, if you've run the clean or you've dumped the tanks and they're still showing maybe one third, two third, but you know they're empty, there are sensors on those tanks that can get continuity between the moisture in there. Give it about 15 minutes to dry, let the water drip down the sides, and come back and check it. They should read empty. If not, you can either try to dump them again or bring it in, let our service folks take care of it for you. Now, with your HVAC system, with your air conditioner, you're usually going to have either the GE or the Coleman Mach. This one happens to have the GE controls for both our furnace and our AC. Just change the mode for whatever you want. You can adjust your temperature there. And if it's super hot, you want to keep it 70 degrees inside, but it might be 85 or 90 degrees outside. Remember, these walls are thin and these are compressors. So what you want to do is keep the fan on high. Don't put it on auto because if you do that, the fan could possibly freeze up. If you do have a master bath, uh, bedroom like this, you'll have pocket doors. Got yourself a queen size bed with storage underneath. Just watch out because it's not strut supported. Most of the bullet ultralights should come with a laundry hatch, which is accessible from the outside storage compartment. Just drop your laundry basket in there or, you know, whatever you want. That's usually where I'll keep Bobby and I'll drop him some Slim Jims down there every now and then. You'll have mushroom lights, USB charging, 110 charging on both sides of the bed, as well as cubby storage. With your circuit and uh, fuse box, just check this because if anything, AC, oven, microwave, whatever. If the fuse is bad, you'll be able to know by a little red LED light. If that light is on, the fuse is bad. But if you've checked the AC, you've checked the fridge, you've checked everything, I'm plugged into shore power, battery disconnect is, is good, and I should be getting juice. My control panel has juice, but my AC is not running. My furnace isn't running. If these fuses look okay, bring this unit in for service. Let our folks check it out for you. Close, Ernie. Now, if you do have a booth dinette inside your unit, your booth dinette will be what's known as the dream dinette with no legs. And it's easy to convert into the bed. You just push it down. You might have to access the release, which is this little handle right here. As you see, when it comes up, this folds in and you see how it goes right there in that little latch. Release that, push this down, get your big butt out the way. And now it's gonna sit on these little stoppers down here and you can take the cushions out from the side. And now you have yourself a nice little convertible sleeper, which one adult could easily fit on. Well, it depends. If it's Shaquille O'Neal, you're probably out of luck. Stainless steel undermounted sink right here with the high rise faucet. You'll also notice these pop up power stations with 110 and dual USB. Just make sure that you are charged into power because once again, everything is when you're plugged in, you will charge your batteries. But when you're not, everything will pull from the batteries, including these 12 volt fridges like we have right here. So you're either going to have the um, GE fridge freezer combo like you see right here uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. or you're going to have the Dometic fridge freezer combo which runs on both gas and electric if you have the GE this is a 12 volt fridge which is good you can run it while going down the road with your tow vehicle just make sure you got a battery charge light on your truck because these things will drain a battery you're looking at maybe 220 minutes uh, of, of runtime off your coach battery, that's not a long time. 
This one you can see has the dial for cooling, cold, and then of course off right there. These are great because they're vibration smart, they're frost resistant, you got the little latch right there to keep them in place. Now you're gonna have uh, the Furion range and oven like we have here. I'm gonna cut on a little light so Bobby can get in there and take a look at that. Now these are these are ignited by propane. So right now we do not have the propane on, so the flame won't come on. But if you need to cut it on, push until you see that red right there, push it in and then turn. Oh, we do have propane. And there's your controls. Cut that off. Same thing with the oven. Open it up, cut it on fire. And we should have flame down there as well. And then just control the temperatures right there. Just make sure that when you're done, all these switches are off because you don't want propane leaking into the coach. Another cool little tip, if you're not getting your furnace, your furnace isn't coming on, it's not heating, um, try going ahead and cutting the oven on or the burners on to run that additional air out of the pipeline. It could just be that the propane hadn't fed all the line all the way. So that's one little tip or trick that might you know, be able to help you save uh, bringing your coach in. You're gonna have some entertainment options too. A lot of the Keystone Bullets have storage behind the TV here in the entertainment center. Nice little additional storage, but you're gonna have your key TV multi-source connection. You're gonna have power, gonna have HDMI, and then the Keystone Bullet Ultralights will also have the Furion AM FM Command Center, Bluetooth, dual zone, HDMI plus USB, Nice little entertainment center. You can play the music inside or out. And I know I mentioned you're either gonna have the GE or the, the uh, Coleman Mach air conditioner. This is the GE. If you wanna know what it sounds like when we have the quick cool dump open, this is what it sounds like when it's cold, when it's closed. This is what it sounds like when it's open. So if you wanna gauge for what your new air conditioner is gonna sound like, that's it. Right here is the filter. You can release those knobs, pull it down, change the filter or clean it out. If you do have the Thomas Paine love seat sleeper sofa option, just take those pillows off, lift this up and pull it out. Just be careful because it is rather heavy. If you got bad back or bad hands or anything like that, get somebody to help you out. That comes down, this folds down and now you have yourself a bed. You can put the pillows back on if you want, but just a nice little sleeping option. Got it there, got it there. And then you of course have double over double bunks. If you do have those, you're gonna find they have 300 pound capacities, three inch thick mattresses on these. And you'll either have fold up storage like we have here, or you'll have a storage compartment underneath on most bunk models. And you'll also see that we have cubby storage back there as well as um, dual USB charging. Last but not least, let's get to the bathroom. So you got the Dometic plastic bowl with the foot flush right here. Push that down, that sends the water in and you'll see the black seal with the flapper. If the flapper is not sticking, you can just take some Vaseline, rub it on the bottom of the seal and that should keep the flapper sticking. Now, if, if your Keystone Bullet Ultralight has the shower tub surround in it, it will look much like this right here. You'll have the corner notches as well as the sprayer nozzle with the adjustable head right there and the vent and fan right there. Sink, the whole nine. So, great little RVs. I'm glad you got a chance to meet it. Hopefully, this video helped you with some of the features you're gonna find inside your Keystone Bullet Ultralight. But at any time, if you have any questions, you can reach out to our elite service team or just bring your RV to the closest camping world or gander and we will help you out. Because after all, what we wanna do most is make sure you enjoy that camping trip.